it's all, you know, experimental. I wasn't sure how much airflow I needed and where to put it, so I just kind of put it where I thought I would work and put it all together. Okay, let's get it started. So just getting her started. I've got everything closed off. You can see we got some smoke, but it doesn't do that once it gets hot. But we'll continue getting it. Oh, it's starting to get some airflow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Oh yeah, one hand. There we are, cooking on the top. This thing's been going for about 20 minutes. That is the top. So that like that. So wood goes in here. That's just the air airflow. That's my firebox. I got a, a grate on my door. And then this is my ash catcher spot. So it falls through the grate once it's finished so it doesn't clog up my rocket stove. Uh, now, uh, so these are air passageways because this is the primary burning area going in through here and then as it burns comes up here and if it gets really hot we can give it more oxygen to make it more efficient and depending on you know how how much oxygen we want to give it we can you know take caps off these nipples so these tubes go through this area and into this area. This area is an insulative, like it, it's filled with uh, perlite. So uh, there's a there's two tubes, an outer tube and an inner tube. Yeah, fire comes up here. The intention is for the fire to come out and then around and then out through the chimney here. And then, yeah, up there. Uh, I'll get it started without yakking your ear off too much. Oh, and this is another uh, way for me to control air uh, flow. So, you know, I guess it's kind of self-explanatory. It's, it's a bunch of nested bushings. So, you know, I could take this whole, whole bottom off and have a huge big hole for air intake. And it is curious. Anywho, it's been 15 minutes. So let's take a look. Part is still pretty cool. If I touched it, I'd just start to feel it get warm. Doing. Oh, see, and you, if you notice, little puffs of smoke happens less as the stove gets hot, but makes me think twice about, you know, what whether or not this stove is ready to be put into a house at least. Maybe like I don't know, like a cook shack or something like that, because you can cook on top of this. Like, like I could fry an egg on top of that. Like probably like. Give her five minutes, maybe ten minutes. But I, I haven't been using uh, any pellets, and I don't plan on using pellets until I have decided that you know we're about as hot as we can get. Uh, until we're about as hot as we can get uh, with the just the wood. Cause I know it gets pretty hot. It gets hotter with the pellets. I just uh, spray these nipples, supplying air into the secondary fire tube, and she's chugging right along there. 
that's that's kind of what I'm going for here. My my wood sliding in. So that's nice. As it burns, you know, it slides down. Um, ain't no smoke out the top there. Hasn't been like that for a while. Um, I kind of wonder whether or not I would have this backdraft problem, like smoke popping out through here, if this stove wasn't outside. I mean, if the chimney the chimney's got to be outside, but, but I mean, like if the stove was inside. Maybe I wouldn't have this problem, I don't know. But uh, yeah, she's, so we'll check her temperature. And I checked right here. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it seems to be about ho hovering about at the same, the same temperature with the, uh, um, let's see, I can't even read that. It seems to be hovering at about the same temperature uh, with these nipples open, um, but I got like nice burning going on here. Like it burn is it burning better? Uh, I, I I wonder if I'm using less fuel with those open. That is my theory at this point. You know, I made those so for for the for the wood to burn more efficiently. You know, those were a pain to install, so I hope hope I didn't install them for nothing. But yeah, we are rocking. I covered up uh, these guys. Once it gets hot, it seems like you don't really need to do that. Even this, if you open this guy up, it seems like we get backdrafting, so I just seems to be the way, once it's hot, this seems to be the way to do it. You just open up these guys. So depending on the temperature, I guess you, you know, you open up different spots to prevent backdraft and burn more efficiently and yada yada yada. So we bur burnt quite a lot of our wood. And yeah, I haven't used any pellets, uh, but we should do that right away here. Because I feel like we've kind of reached our peak. I know we could cook on top of that. Let's see what this is. See, that's hot. And one cool thing I noticed last time I ran this is uh, I went outside just to, you know, lay this thing down just in case wind came up and knocked it over or something, you know, just in case. Uh, but I, I couldn't. I had to wait longer because that metal was so hot I couldn't even touch it, like, hours afterwards. So, you know, there, there's a lot of steel just on that one piece of pipe. And... It keeps, it will keep a house warm or, you know, a little bachelor, whatever, whatever the heck you put it in. It would give off heat for hours after the stove went out. And because this thing, it gets so hot, um, I feel like it's a good thing so that it doesn't get too hot in the, the space that it's heating. Yeah. Pellets are in. And right away, I, I thought I put a bit too much in, but too much. But uh, yeah, right away it just started to go. So there's a big difference. It's always behaving already. So yeah, Let's let her let her warm up. Try. Oh, we got some smoke out here. Oh shoot! Yeah, I did put too much in. <clears throat> So I kind of stuffed a bit too much fuel in there, so it's not, I wouldn't say we're efficiently running, it's kind of, it's smoky and it's kind of, kind of yuck. It's not smoky there anymore. It was smoking pretty good a second ago. But uh, we are, we are so hot right there. I said that was, that was 365. Well, it's been about 10 minutes that we were burn, burning the uh, pellets, so much, much hotter with the pellets. 
I so like, wow, zoinks! She is burning hot. We can't even get a reading like anywhere. And even like, so when you go to the insulated area, and it's still hot. That was not like too hot. I mean, you can't. I mean, look at that. Like, that's like, that would be heating my house if I had it in a house. Like, holy moly. Holy bejesus. So, uh, I guess that's the end of our experiment, because I don't have a thermometer that can read it any hotter. But man, it's like, I feel like a, like a conductor, like a train conductor, because, uh, like throwing in these, because it's like, whoof, she giving her, she, she burning, she burning real, see, well, okay, we'll do this then. Let's open up this baby. <clears throat> I'm poking it. I'm gonna poke it. Poke the fire. Poke the fire. Is that satisfying? I think so. We're like climbing. Our fire's like climbing. I used to fall in my wood. Well, all the ones I cut. I'm just yakking. Jeez, I guess those burn bright, hey? Well, good thing we're outside because it is backdrafting. So we'll just close this. See what happens. Close this. Go oh, on, brave. Ugh. Okay, now let's open this up again with a stick. Yeah, no more backdraft now that we closed the, the firebox door. Yeah, she's, she's qu pretty quiet right now, actually. You can hear it crackling, but it's not roaring, oddly enough. Maybe these guys got something to do with it. Actually, let's just try putting this on and see if it makes a difference in how these, how it sounds. This one too. And this one. No difference. It's cracking away. Let's see if we can visibly see anything. I'm gonna take these nipples off. Start with the top one. Second one, and the bottom one. I can't notice anything. Huh. Burning good though. So it's been two hours since we stopped burning, and we are still pretty warm. So Another cool thing about this stove, it holds its heat for a while. And it's windy out here. So, yeah, it wouldn't even cool off that quick if it was inside. <laughs>